Apple's compressor is a great application for converting video files, audio, and still images, but unlike most Apple software, the UI is not the most intuitive. In this tutorial, I'll do a full walkthrough of Compressor and all its features. We'll be covering the following topics, so if you're looking for one of these specifically, feel free to skip to that part. I'll include chapter marks in the description below. So, what is Compressor? It's a conversion tool mostly intended for video files, but you can also use it to convert audio files or still images. Compressor is designed to work alongside Final Cut Pro, but you can also use it as a standalone application to convert media files. It's very similar to Adobe's Media Encoder if you're familiar with that. This is how Compressor looks when you first launch it. I feel like all most Apple software is usually very intuitive to use, but to me, Compressor was always a bit different. Don't get me wrong, it's a great tool and it's actually very easy to use, but it took me a minute to figure out how to do certain things here. Up here, you see your preview, and the bottom half is where you drop your media files. Simple enough. But where the real magic happens is on the sides, and for some reason, they decided to hide these by default. So the first thing I do is to open the presets menu that shows all built-in presets, and if you create your custom presets, they'll be listed here as well. The inspector on the right side is where you can change your settings, so that's the most important part of Compressor. Again, they hide it by default, and I have no idea why. But I like to keep these open. That's where I do most of my work anyway when using Compressor. So the first thing you do is to add a video you're about to compress. After that, you can pick a preset. I usually use my own presets or manually adjust the settings for each export, but there are a pretty good number of built-in presets to choose from. When you select a preset, you'll see the details on the right side in the inspector. The General tab has some general information about the preset. You'll see the estimated file size and file extension. For custom presets, you can pick the default output location, and you can also change if you want both video and audio tracks or just one of them. For built-in presets, you can't change any of the settings for the preset itself, but once you add the preset to your video, you can change the settings for this specific export. The Video tab will have all the detailed video settings and the Audio tab has all your audio settings. So let's drop this preset on our video. Now we can change all the output settings for our export. I'll walk you through the settings in a minute. But first let's look at the output folder, meaning where our exported video will go. This part always feels a little clunky to me. By default, our video goes to Source meaning it goes next to the file we're about to compress. You can't click or double-click this as you see here, but instead, you'll need to right-click it to view your other options. From there, you can choose between a couple of options or choose a custom folder. If you have a go-to folder where you want your exports to go, you can add a folder to that menu from up here. It has a couple of built-in options, and I just added my Downloads folder here as a test. Again, a little clumsy, but you can't add new folders directly from here. To add a new folder, you need to navigate down here and click the plus icon on the bottom left. Then choose your folder. Now going back to our file, the output folder we just added appears directly under the location menu. This might have been a dumb example since the movies folder was already there by default, but you get the point. Let's look at the preview screen next. There's a little divider here that's supposed to give you sort of a before and after look of your video. Sometimes I need to compress videos to the smallest possible file size while maintaining good image quality, so this could be really useful. But unfortunately, I don't think it really works with bit rates. As you see here, I'm adjusting the bit rates. And even when setting the bit rate way down to a value that would normally look very pixelated, I don't see any difference in my preview. Where it does seem to work is the resolution. So when I change it from 4K to a smaller resolution, the resulting image appears blurry since it's going to lose a lot of resolution. But again, the resolution I'm testing here at a 100% scale would be a tiny window compared to what we're looking at. So the representation here is stretched out making it look blurrier than what it actually would look at that resolution. Long story short, this could be useful in some cases, 
but I usually end up fully exporting my files and then inspecting them to see if I'm happy with the image quality. Up here, you have a couple of different options for your preview window. Can't say that I ever really need these, but if you want, you can change the background color of your window, or if you're planning to crop your video, you can preview that crop here. Under Video Properties, you can change a whole bunch of things. My most used properties are frame size, frame rate, codec, and bitrate. For bitrate, you can use a custom value or use the built-in values that come with each preset. Using the multi-pass option under bitrate will do a double pass on your footage, which can sometimes lead into better image quality, but takes about twice as long to export. Another cool feature is the ability to crop your video. Usually, this would be something you have to do in a separate video editing software, so it's nice to have this ability in Compressor. You can either crop, or you can use padding. Padding will preserve everything in your frame while squeezing it into a smaller area. If you're using crop or padding, this is where having the before and after slider is really useful, since it gives you an accurate preview of how your footage will look after those adjustments. Moving down to the list, you'll have the option to rotate your video, so if your landscape clip was accidentally saved as a vertical video, you can fix that here. And if you're dealing with mirrored video, you can also flip it back to normal here. The quality section allows you to give compressor instructions for image analysis for frame resizing, retiming, and deinterlacing. This gets pretty technical, so I'll keep it high level. Using the resize filter options can help your image quality when you're resizing videos to different dimensions. Anti-aliased will give you the best image quality, but it can take significantly longer to export. Retiming quality is something you'd use if you're converting from one frame rate to another. And lastly, the video effects menu allows you to add things like gamma correction, noise removal, watermarks, or lots. Here's some of the options you get for watermark placement, and if you want, you can add multiple effects to the same video. Audio settings are pretty straightforward. You'll have your channel layout, sample rate, codec, bitrate, and all that good stuff. Let's look at custom presets next. You can create custom presets from the bottom left corner. I'm going to make my usual MP4 preset here, since that's a format that a lot of people are using. Once you create a preset, it shows up on the left side, under the Custom Presets menu, and when you have it selected, you can adjust the settings for this preset on your inspector on the right. These are all the same settings we just went over, so you can adjust them to your liking, and then simply drag and drop the preset on your video. We now have the settings we want, and the output folder that we want it's time to export. Click Start Batch on the bottom right corner and your export will start. You'll see the progress under the Active tab and once it's finished, it gets moved under the Completed tab. You'll see the status and overall time it took to export your video. And here's our final exported video. Next up, Droplets. Droplets are a convenient way to automate exports with pre-specified settings. Let me show you how it works. With your preset selected on the left, go to the plus icon on the bottom left corner and choose Save as Droplet. Then give your droplet a name and choose the location where you want to save it. You can also pick where all the exports using this droplet will go. I'm just going to use the source option, meaning the exported files will be saved next to the original file. We're gonna hit save and go check out our droplet. To use the droplet, you don't have to have compressor running in the background. Now I can grab any video and drag and drop it over my droplet. This will open a small window confirming your options for this export, and when we start the batch, compressor will automatically start the conversion in the background. With MP4 files, you'll see these temporary files appear in the folder you're exporting to. Once your export is finished, they will get merged into a single MP4 video file. Looks like our conversion is done. And here's the beautiful MP4 file we created without even launching Compressor. Super useful if you're working on something that requires you to crank out similar exports regularly. 
One feature we didn't talk about yet is watch folders. These are folders you can tell Compressor to constantly keep an eye on. And as soon as a video gets added to a watch folder, Compressor will take it and convert it. I'm going to add this folder as a watch folder, and I'll pick this 4K preset to be the format everything gets converted to. I can also set the output location for all these conversions. This could be used, for example, to create proxy files for all the media that gets offloaded from a camera. Your DIT offloads files into a watch folder. Compressor will take them and convert them to a specific proxy format, and then output them into a dedicated proxy folder. You can process these on your own computer, or if you have shared computers set up on your local network, you can pick a shared machine to do the conversions. I'll check this box so it will convert the files that are already in my folder. And if you want, you can set up an automated action once the conversion is done, for example, an email notification, or opening the file in a specific application. Once you're happy with your settings, you can change the status to activated. As soon as I activate it, you'll see a spinning wheel here, indicating that a conversion is running in the background. And a quick look at our desktop reveals that the converted files are starting to flow in. I can monitor all this activity here. I'll hit the fast forward button to save you some time but you'll see those two files finish converting in the background. Once that's done, I'm adding a new file into my watch folder, and you'll see that as soon as I finish copying it into my watch folder, Compressor picks it up and starts converting that one as well. The last thing I'll show you is how to use our presets in Final Cut Pro. When working in Final Cut, you can always send your files into Compressor to be converted, but it's easier if you add an existing preset directly into your Final Cut export menu. Just follow the steps I'm showing here, and you can have any custom preset available directly under the Export drop-down menu in Final Cut. And this is not limited to video formats. You can use it for still images and audio files as well. So that wraps up our full guide to using Apple's Compressor. I think Compressor is underrated for what it can do and it's reasonably priced. So I wanted to make this guide for anyone who is considering it or might already own it, but wants to learn how to get the most out of this application. Hope this was helpful and maybe you learned something new from it. I'd love to hear any feedback, comments, questions, and suggestions, so make sure you use the comment box below and share your thoughts. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.